Notre Dame has an offensive coordinator, and you would think they would. Most everybody has finalized their staff. Not everybody, but most everybody. And Marcus Freeman probably didn't think it was going to take this long. And then there was that public courting with Ludwig out of Utah that didn't go very well, but they do. They finally have promoted from within, and Christian McCollum joins us from Irish Sports Daily, covers Notre Dame with us on 365 Sports with Paul Craig and David Smoke. Christian, has this been a black eye uh, in a way to, to uh, Notre Dame football and how this has kind of gone down, or is that is that exaggeration? Uh, no, I don't think that's an exaggeration at all. Um, it, it's something that will it, it'll go away eventually, right? But right now, especially in the offseason, there's not much to talk about. You know, everyone's pretty fired up. And it, it, it's not so much about the fact that they ended up with Gerard Parker, although some fans were hoping for someone better. It's like you said, the way this process played out, um, with the Ludwig courting and, and the way that played out kind of through the media. Um, and there's a lot of different, you know, sides to believe. Notre Dame's athletic director, Jack Swarbrick, uh, just released an email he sent to some supporter um, telling his side of the story, at least part of it. And, and it's just a lot of, you know, it, it's not a good look for the Irish right now. That's for sure. So it was the buyout that, that tripped this up or was it something more? So it depends on who you believe, right? So, um, Ludwig had a $2.8 million buyout reportedly, which is extremely large for an assistant coach. Um, but he just recently re-upped with Utah, and this is where the buyout's going to be the highest. So everyone agrees there was some miscommunication, and Notre Dame, for whatever reason, was not aware of the size of his buyout. Um, so that, you know, whose fault is that? Probably just about everybody. Um, but you know, Jack Swarbrick, like I said, in this email that he just released, he claims the buyout was a quote-unquote obstacle, but it was one that they were willing to get around and was not the reason that Ludwig's not at Notre Dame. So that begs the question, why isn't he at Notre Dame? And, and Swarbrick didn't get into that during his email. So, you know, like I said, it depends on who you believe. So one of the criticisms that's that's popped up out of this, and it's been mentioned at other times too, is that you know Notre Dame's got all this money, like they're the dragons sitting on this big batch of gold, but they they keep the purse strings tight. Do you agree with that, or is that a misconception? Uh, you must be reading our message board or any other message board <laughs> there is out there associated with Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe that's a misconception. I mean, you know, that's one of the things when you do have a, a giant endowment that begins with the letter B. Um, and you seem to be, you know, you know, fighting over a million dollars here, a million dollars there. And, I mean, obviously, it's easy to, to spend somebody else's money, but um, that's definitely, you know, the narrative. And, and I think it's backed up, in fact, in some ways. And, and like I said, it's, when you're a fan of a, a school or a team, you know, you never want to hear money comes is, is the reason why somebody's not getting some improvement or something or why you didn't sign the shortstop that you want to keep. I, I think Paul's a Red Sox fan. I'm a Red Sox fan. Yeah myself um but you know so it's easy to spend someone else's money but at the same time yeah i mean notre dame is not poor um and the fact that you know sometimes some of these deals come down to money um they are obviously trying to shed that narrative um during tommy reese's courtship at alabama they let it be known that they were going to match whatever offer alabama gave i mean how are you going to do that how can you how can you guarantee the match you don't even know what the offer is going to be uh, but it does show that they're they're sensitive to that narrative, and I think it's grounded in some reality. So Parker's the new offensive coordinator. He's been promoted. There was, at least from where I sit and from watching some of the reactions, and even those who have watched what we do every day on this show, a couple of Notre Dame fans that, uh, that keep us updated on some things as well, that there was like, my God, Alabama, thank you. Please take him. That was at least from what I saw. Has that changed based on who now is the offensive coordinator? So it's always it's always the thing with a with a whether it's a quarterback or a coach or whoever the fans always want to get rid of them, and mm -hmm. then the question is, all right, who are you going to replace them with? <laughs> um, so so and, and I wouldn't say Tommy Reese. It, it wasn't a uh, consensus that the fans wanted to get rid of him by any means, um, but there were some people that thought, all right, we can upgrade here at this position. And now that you know Parker's the guy. Some you know fans are rightly questioning: Is it an upgrade to have the guy that was working underneath um, Reese? Is he representing an upgrade? Um, possibly, right? I mean, Notre Dame they kind of went through this a few years ago uh, when Mike Elko left to go down to Texas A&M, and they promoted Clark Lee, 
Um, and Clark Lee did a fine job. Obviously, he's the head coach of Vanderbilt now. Um, I don't think there's the, the, the segment of the population, Notre Dame fans, that was not happy, that was not sad to see Reese go. I don't think they're clamoring to have him back. Uh, but at the same time, I think Tommy Reese, he dealt with a lot of criticism. I mean, I, if you struggle to find some guy who suffered from criticism from Notre Dame fans for a more longer period of time than Tommy Reese between his days as a player and a coach, um, some of that was fair and some of it was unfair, though. Um, so I, I, obviously the guy was well thought of. Nick Saban was going to hire him as offensive coordinator. And I think Tommy Reese probably was like, I, I've been here long enough. I've put up with this long enough. And, and the fans that wanted him gone, they might not be jumping up and down right now, but I don't think they're, they're saying, I wish I had him back. All right, so what does this all mean for Sam Hartman? Uh, hopefully it doesn't change much in terms of what he's going to do. Um, they, they brought in Gino Gadouli from he's at Wisconsin, but he's really a Cincinnati guy, to be the quarterback coach. And that seems like a home run hire. Um, the fact that he has that relationship with some of the staff members, including Freeman, dating back to the Cincinnati days and his development from Des- for Desmond Ritter um, was obviously great. I mean, you know, that's kind of one knock on Reese that, you know, it's hard to argue with is did he really develop quarterbacks? And some of his defenders will say, well, he didn't really have great quarterbacks to develop. But then the argument is, well, those are the guys he recruited. Um, so, you know, Gadouli, it, it, he could easily be an upgrade at the quarterback coaching position. And for Sam Hartman, I'm just the believer that if Sam Hartman can just come in and play the way he played throughout his tenure at Wake Forest, um, that he's going to have tremendous amount of success. Um, he should have better tools to work with, better pieces around him. Um, and I think the Dooley is, is a really, really good hire for that that part of it. Christian, people can get spoiled when, you know, you're winning 10-plus games every single year, and then last year, you know, a down year, so to speak. It obviously started off very rough, but by the end, they won nine games. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty, pretty salty for, you know, uh, for a down year. What's just sort of the feeling right now in general, checking the, the pulse on Marcus Freeman, how that first year went? Obviously, they're making changes to correct what wasn't exactly up to par, uh, but just what's kind of the feel after the way they were able to salvage uh, last season? Yeah, I think there was, there was a great excitement prior to this whole offensive coordinator fiasco, which is, you know, obviously all the talk right now. Uh, but you're right. I mean, the beginning of the season was very shaky. Uh, fans are wondering, do we have the right guys? Is Freeman in over his head? What are we doing? How is this going to – is this going to just implode? And they righted that ship so quickly. Um, it was really, really impressive. Um, so – Coming out of that, you know, you add Sam Hartman, where a lot of people said the quarterback position was the, the glaring weakness. You add one of the premier quarterbacks in the country, and now it's like, all right, let's go. I mean, you know, recruiting has been going well, even though it might not have, you know, ended the way they wanted to on signing day, missed out on a couple of key guys. Freeman has shown exactly what people thought he would. He's been a, a, a stud on the recruiting trail, and more than anything, his staff has been as well. Because when you work for a guy like that, that really values recruiting, you're going to have to recruit. And basically everybody on this staff has done a great job recruiting. So the arrow's looking up. You know, fans are really, really excited about what's going to come. Um, you know, Notre Dame has obviously, you know, another big season ahead of them. Uh, fans always have high hopes. But really it's just the, the kind of thing with the offensive coordinator, the way this works out is a, a lot of fans feel sour about the fact that, you know, Marcus Freeman didn't, might not have got his first choice. And, and they feel like they're kind of handicapping you know, this guy that you just brought in, head coach, and everyone's really rooting for him. So they want him to have the guys he wants. That being said, you know, Gerard Parker and Marcus Freeman are extremely close. I mean, they're closer than friends. They're, they're close to, like, brothers. Um, so this could be kind of one of those blessing in disguise moments where I know that Gerard Parker will do everything he can to make sure this works for Freeman, and Freeman's going to do everything he can uh, to make sure his boy um, is successful in this role. One more thing for you, Christian. We appreciate your time. And we've talked a lot, as you know, in this area, the Big 12 and the, and the realignment, the new TV deal, so they're good. We know what the Big 10, SEC have done. ACC is kind of in their long-term deal, and the Pac-12 is trying to find out what is their next move. But we've mentioned this. When people bring up Notre Dame, there's no reason is there for them to do anything, and even then it may not be a reason, until the college football playoff puts them in a position where they must do something different to be in the playoff or have an option to be in the playoff? That, that's correct. And Jack Swarbrick's on the record of that. 
Um, he's basically saying that if you know if they get pushed out of the college football playoff, then then that's when they'll look um, to potentially be forced into a conference. And it's interesting because the SEC is likely to be the ones that say, "Oh no, let's just la- leave Notre Dame alone. But let's keep them, give them access to the playoff." Because they know that if Notre Dame is forced into a conference, that's just going to make the Big Ten that much richer, uh, that much stronger as a conference. So they expect the SEC to be the ones that are, you know, keeping Notre Dame's avenue to that college football playoff alive as long as they can. Because you're right, once that's shut off, that's when Notre Dame will like will look to win a conference, and in all likelihood, that conference would be the Big Ten. Christian, good stuff. Really good. Thank you very much for your time. Christian McCollum, Iris Sports Daily, our old, old offensive coordinator hiring, and uh, obviously uh, the delay it, public. Uh, Utah and Ludwood looks like that was a done deal then, until it wasn't. And, and uh, now their, their staff, they have that together. They've added a couple of other pieces, too. I do like that uh, in this 